Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss how to evaluate limits of functions as x approaches infinity. And we're going to concentrate on this particular function here and discuss its limiting behaviour as x gets large and positive. But before we get to that, let's motivate the subject. Why are these kinds of limits important and how are they useful? Why are they worth learning? Well, the limit of a function, as x gets large and positive, if the limit exists, can describe the function's long-term behaviour or the long-term trend of the function. Now, geometrically, what's going on here is if this limit exists, then the function will have a horizontal asymptote represented by uh, the limit value. Now, basically, we're interested in this long-term behaviour because it can be important information in modelling. And this, this limit as x approaches infinity can enable us to make predictions about future states of the phenomena involved. So for example, the function under consideration might represent the uh, size of a population. And x might represent time. What we're interested in is does the population tend to some sort of equilibrium limit as time goes on in the long run. All right, so let's build our intuition though. Let's talk about a specific example. Here we've got a function and we're asked to discuss the limiting behaviour of the function as x approaches infinity. Well, let's deconstruct this a little bit. If I naively look at each of the limits of the individual terms, well, this limit of x squared as x approaches infinity is going to tend to infinity. The limit of cos x, well, that limit doesn't exist because cos x just oscillates up and down between minus 1 and 1. The limit of x is going to be positive infinity. And the limit of 2x squared, similarly, positive infinity. And the limit of sine x as x goes to infinity, it's, well, again, that just oscillates like cos, similar to cos x. And the limit of this doesn't exist. So in its current form, this is not, um, uh, not in a fantastic form for taking the limit. So what we're going to do is simplify simplify our f. So I recognize that we have the highest power in the denominator is it involves x squared. So what I'm going to do is divide top and bottom by x squared. So just dividing each term by x squared, I come up with this. Now, is, you might think, well, hang on, you haven't simplified that. That's actually, that looks more difficult. But if I now take the limit of each individual term, then well, I'm going to get a 1 here, a 2 here, a 0 here, and it's just these two terms that have to be carefully examined. Now, you may think, well, I actually know the limit of this term as x goes to infinity because the x squared's got to dominate the cos x when x is large. And similarly, the x squared has to dominate the sin x when x is large. Well, yes, that's true. That's true. But let's actually prove that. Okay? Now we, we think that, lim that this limit's going to be zero. And to prove that, I can use the following important inequality. Now cos x, it just oscillates between minus one and one. And this is for all x. Now we're only interested in, in the case when x is large and positive, but, but this, this holds for all x. Now what I can do is form this in here by dividing each side and in the middle by x squared. Now because x squared is going to be positive in this case, then I can keep the same inequality signs. So I'm just going to rule out x equals 0. Alright? Okay, so now 
I can take the limit here, the pinching theorem, or also called the squeeze theorem, or the uh, sandwich theorem, tells us that I can take the limit here, here, and here, and keep the same inequalities. So we call it the pinching theorem, but you may call it something else. Okay, so now I can recognize, well, this limit's going to be zero, this limit's going to be zero, so the limit in the middle is going to be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, so it must actually equal zero. So I just, just recognize that I'm sort of abusing the notation here. So similarly, what about this limit of this term up here? We know this, know this, know this, know this. This is the last one. You can go through the same sort of steps and get the limit of this sine x on x squared as x approaches infinity equals zero. So similarly, and I'm not going to do that case, So let's put all that information together. The limit of this is zero, the limit of this is zero, the limit of this is zero. So I basically get one over two as x gets large and positive for my f of x. So basically we're just using basic limit laws here. So I take the limits throughout and simplify. Okay, so what is the limiting behaviour of our function as x approaches infinity? Well, the, the function tends to positive one half in the long run. Okay, well let's look at the bigger picture here. That's that, that's that particular example solved, but what are some ideas and some, some techniques that you can use to solve all sorts of problems? Well, I've listed two important points here. Firstly, simplify the original function as much as possible through, in this case, well, I used algebraic manipulation. And secondly, look to apply basic limit laws or more advanced ideas like the pinching theorem, that I did, like, like I did in this particular example, or you can use the Hoppe-Tiles rule if you, if you uh, know what it is. Now, an important idea that you have to remember about these videos is you don't get good by watching. You get good at maths by doing it. So I've left an example for you to do, discuss the limiting behaviour of this function as x gets large and positive, and it's very similar to the particular example that I just solved.